All right, we're working in intermediate algebra. Uh, this is section 4.1. If you're following along in your book, that starts on page 139. The topic is rational expressions, equations, and functions, and we're going to start with simplifying a rational expression. Uh, this is example 1 on page 139. It says 3x plus 21 over 5x plus 35. All right, this is an example of what a rational expression looks like. Rational is just a fancy word for fraction. A rational expression is algebraic expression in the numerator and the denominator. To simplify, and that's what we're working on right now, simplify means to reduce. Um, the first thing students will try to do is reduce these terms, uh, 21 and 35 are both divisible by 7, but you cannot reduce terms. Because there's pluses and minuses here, you cannot reduce these. You can only reduce factors. So you're going to need to factor the numerator and the denominator. I'm not going to go into this factoring in detail. Um, I will link some other detailed videos on factoring below, but at this point you should be able to factor already. Uh, in the numerator, the first kind of factoring we see is a GCF, so we're going to factor out a GCF of 3. That leaves x plus 7. In the denominator, there's a GCF of 5. When we factor that out, that also leaves x plus 7. And then we notice that these binomials match. Now, since this operation here is multiplied, these are factors, and now you can reduce them. But you can only reduce binomials off if they exactly match a binomial above or below it. So since these entire binomials match, this binomial is a factor you can reduce it all. You can't reduce pieces or terms of binomials, but you can reduce entire binomials together. So that leaves you with a final reduced answer of 3 over 5. All right, example 2 on the same page says x squared minus 2x minus 3 over x squared plus 6x plus 5. I know that you are tempted to cancel off these x squareds, but you cannot do that because they are terms. They're being added and subtracted. So you have to factor the numerator and the denominator, and these are standard trinomials. So when I factor them, I'm going to have x minus 3, x plus 1. If you don't know how to get those factors, uh, look below in the description, I'm going to link some detailed videos on factoring for you. So this will be x plus 5, x plus 1. Um, and I can check those real quickly by double distributing to make sure I actually get back what I'm supposed to have here. Uh, now, I can't reduce these x's because these entire binomials don't match, but these two do. So I can reduce the x plus 1's off. And then my final answer is x minus 3 over x plus 5. And I know, again, you're tempted to cancel off these x's. But remember, if it's got an addition or subtraction sign next to it, you cannot cancel it off. If it doesn't cancel back here where you have all your factors lined out, then it doesn't cancel down here. And this is your final answer. Okay, example 3 is at the top of page 140. And again, we have a trinomial over a trinomial. This is an example of a rational expression. To factor it, to reduce it, you have to factor it. You cannot just start canceling these x squareds. Although this is a factor of this term, this is just a term, and this piece's terms cannot be reduced. You have to factor, factor. So when we factor this, uh, the denominator is a standard trinomial. So we're going to get x plus 7 x plus minus 4 in the denominator. The numerator, you're going to have to use um, either AC method or slide and divide or square root method or some other method because of this 2 on the lead coefficient. But once you do that, you will have the factors 2x plus 1 times x minus 4. And then you can cancel these x minus 4s that match. And you're left with 2x plus 1 over x plus 7. 
do not cancel these x's. You cannot cancel terms. So this is your final answer here. Okay, so example 4 on the same page, 140, says x minus 7 over 49 minus x squared. Um, the numerator here does not factor, it's prime. So you don't, you can't really do anything with that x minus 7. The denominator, if you notice, is the difference of squares. Perfect square minus a perfect square. Now some people will change this order to factor it because it's not in descending order. So technically this is negative x squared plus 49, um, but then you can't factor it because then it's not the difference of squares. So I'm just going to go ahead and factor it out of order like this, and you'll have x minus 7, x plus 7, because the difference of squares takes the square root of the first term, the square root of the second term, and then you have uh, opposite signs, one of each. And it doesn't matter, I wrote this wrong, it doesn't matter which order you write them in, this should be x, 7 plus x. Okay, now you can cancel x minus 7 with 7 minus x. They are not the same thing. They are opposites. See, this 7 is negative and this one's positive. This is positive, this is negative. These are opposites. You can cancel opposites, but they don't make 1. They make negative 1. So when you cancel them, you have to put a negative 1 in the numerator. So this turns out to be negative 1 over x plus 7, which is the same as 7 plus x, so I just turned it around and wrote it in descending order. Alright, example 5, still on page 140, says 16 minus 2x over 7x minus 56. Uh, we're just going to factor. Uh, in the numerator we see a GCF of 2, so we end up with 8 minus x. In the denominator we see a GCF of 7, so we end up with x minus 8. And we have this same situation that we had before. 8 minus x and x minus 8 are not the same thing, but they are opposites. You see the terms are opposites. This is a negative x, this is a positive, this is positive, this is a negative. When they are opposites like this, it's okay to cancel them, but you cannot rem forget that that leaves a negative 1. And we always put it in the numerator. Now when you get ready to simplify, this is 2 times negative 1, not 2 minus 1. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. In the denominator, we just have the 7. So this is negative 2 over 7. Okay, example 6 on page 140 says 5x cubed minus 40 over 3x squared plus 6x plus 12. Okay, in the numerator, right off the bat, I see a GCF of 5. So I'm going to factor out 5, but that leaves me with x cubed minus 8, which I'm hoping that you guys recognize is the difference of cubes. Uh, like I said below, I'm going to link some more detailed videos on factoring, but this is the difference of cubes, and so you're going to follow that formula that has the a and the b, um, and when you're done factoring all of that, you're going to end up with your 5 on the outside, x minus 2, x squared plus 2x plus 4. Like I said, if you don't remember how to factor the difference of cubes, I will link that video down below. Now, the denominator has a GCF of 3, so we're going to start by factoring that out. That leaves us with x squared plus 2x plus 4, which looks like a standard trinomial here. However, it really isn't going to factor because there are no factors of 4 that add to make 2. So this trinomial is prime, and so just by factoring out that 3, we have factored it completely. So we're going to put that under here, x squared plus. Do not forget when you write this to include your GCFs in the front. Now, if you're paying attention, you'll notice these trinomials right here are identical, so they will cancel. You can't cancel terms off, but if trinomials are identical, they do cancel. So it looks like you're just left with these pieces right here. So your final answer is going to be 5 times x minus 2 over 3. Um, and depending on your teacher, uh, you might want to multiply this out. I personally, in my class, prefer to, to see your answers in factored form. All right, because that proves that nothing else cancels. But some teachers will want you to go ahead and multiply it out. It just depends on your teacher. 
All right, on page 141, we go into finding domain of a rational function. Uh, we did cover this somewhat in chapter one, but here's our function a of x equals x plus one over x minus two. To find the domain means to find what values of x are acceptable. And uh, that has to do with graphing and all of that. Um, for a rational function, it's really important that we remember the denominator cannot equal zero. So to find the domain, you, you can ignore the numerator, or you only need to focus on the denominator. And you can make a statement right off the bat, take the denominator, and you say this cannot equal zero. That is your whole statement of domain here. The denominator cannot equal zero. Then you isolate x, so that will be x cannot equal two. By adding e uh, two to both sides, you get x cannot equal two. This is the beginning of your uh, domain statement. Uh, in set builder, x such that x cannot equal two. That's a set builder. In interval notation, um, sometimes it's helpful to have a graph. If this is two, that means that your domain is open at two, but everything else except the two is shaded. So that looks like negative infinity to positive 2 using parentheses because the 2 is open union with 2 to positive infinity and like I said we did this in chapter 1 so this should be a review for you all right example 8 on page 141 has a new function that we're going to find the domain of b of x equals 2x minus 5 over x plus 7 x minus 5 to find the domain of a rational function which is a fraction you take the denominator and you say this cannot equal zero. Um, so that means that x plus 7 times x minus 5 cannot equal zero. Um, this has to do with the zero product property. In order for this to be equal to zero, that means that one of them would have to be zero. So if you have factored form in your denominator, you can just take each factor and say each one, x plus 7 cannot equal 0 and x minus 5 cannot equal 0. Two different statements. By taking each factor and making its own statement as it cannot equal 0, then you can isolate x and you get x cannot equal negative 7 and x cannot equal positive 5. And that's the beginning of your domain statement. So in set builder, x such that x cannot equal negative 7 comma 5 in numerical order. Um, I'm just going to scroll up a little bit here. We might want to uh, make a number line before we do interval notation because there's going to be a hole at negative 7 and also a hole at 5, but everything else is shaded. Okay. So for interval notation, you're going to need an interval for this piece of shading, an interval for this chunk of shading, and an interval for this chunk of shading. So if you have two holes in your domain, you'll need to write three intervals. So that's going to look like this. Negative infinity to negative 7 open, union with negative 7 to 5 also open, union with 5 to infinity. So that this matches up with this, this matches up with the middle part, and this matches up with this end. And it's all parentheses because this 5 and this 7 are open. Example 9 on page 142 has a new function c of x equals 6 over x squared minus x minus 72. Remember to find domain, it's all about the denominator. But we cannot isolate this x with this denominator in trinomial form like this. We will have to factor the denominator first. So that will be your first step. And don't forget, if you need some help with reviewing the factoring, I'm going to link those uh, videos down below. But these factors turn out to be x minus 9, x plus 8. So you're going to take each of those factors, remember, and say each of them cannot equal 0. So x minus 9 cannot equal 0, x plus 8 cannot equal 0. We isolate x, x cannot equal 9 x cannot equal negative 8. In set builder notation, x such that x cannot equal negative 8 comma 9. 
do not forget to write these in numerical order. So I would not write 9, comma, negative 8. Negative 8 is smaller, so in numerical order. Uh, you don't have to have the number line to write the interval notation. It will be negative infinity to negative 8, open with negative 8 to 9, open 9 to infinity. And I know these go in this order because they go in numerical order left to right on my number line. So this is what these, the interval notation will look like. Right, example 10 on page 142 has a new function. d of x equals x over x squared plus 1. It's all about the denominator. But again, we really like those denominators in factored form. Uh, if you know factoring, you're going to recognize this as the sum of squares. The sum of squares is prime. It does not factor. So the only other way we might be able to isolate that x is to uh, isolate the x squared first by putting that 1 on the other side. And of course, it becomes a negative 1 when you move it to the other side. And then you can use a radical on this x squared to make it x. But when you use a radical, on negative 1, this statement, the square root of negative 1, is not a real number. And of course, when we're talking about domain, we're talking about graphs. And graphs are all about real numbers. So since I isolated this x and it came out to be a not real number, an imaginary number, which we'll talk about in chapter 6, that means there are no values that are excluded from x. There's nothing that I could put here that would make this denominator equal 0 because there's no number that when you square it equals negative 1. So that means that the domain is all real numbers. So in set builder notation, x equals all real numbers. In interval notation, negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, we're going to do example 11 on the next video since I feel like this is getting kind of long. So uh, go ahead to the next video to see example 11.